Everything's pretty gloppy at this point. Some of my watercolor ground is on fairly thick. I like that because it gives me textury stuff to work on later. I like some parts of my painting to be smooth and nice for rendering, but other parts I don't mind to have a bit of roughness. So I do use hot press, but you know, I kind of create my own bumpiness on it. Now, while this is running, which is going to take a while, generally takes, oh, like half an hour for this amount of watercolor ground to dry, I stick it outdoors in the bright sun because that helps it dry a lot faster. <laughs> so it's going to hang out with my succulents and plants here for a bit, and I'm going to take a break while I wait for that to dry. I don't really have a ton planned for this piece. I'm just kind of going with it as it happens. So I've got my palette. I'm just going to take the colors that I actually have here, dry it on my palette, re-wetting them, and painting that on. Let's see, and I think I want to get some just buff titanium. Maybe some yellow. Brighten things up. some blues painting around that lantern because I want that to be one of my brightest spots at the end. Mostly I'm just trying to get water here tinted with a little bit of color because now I'm going to take Low and Sir Newton liquid Indian ink and shook it up now this only works with this very specific brand. I always have people watch my videos doing this and then they go and buy some Indian ink and try this and it doesn't work because not all of them are going to do this clumping, granulating effect that I discovered this particular one has. And I say this every time when I do these kinds of demos as well, that this is just one of the properties I discovered by playing around with mixing various mediums. And, and you can just try playing around with whatever you've got near you, whatever you've got on hand, and sometimes you can get some really cool results out of it. Things that are unexpected, because it's not like it says anywhere on the packaging that this ink is going to do granulating textures, but it does. <laughs> And I wouldn't have ever discovered that if I just hadn't happened to have a painting that I decided to toss some liquid, liquid India ink on. I don't even remember why I did that in the first place, but I did. I'm glad I did it. All right. Now, here we are at another drying phase. The early stages of my paintings, I always have a lot of periods where I'm just going to sit and let the painting do its thing while I go off and get a snack to eat or maybe make some tea or do some other time-wasting activities. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just bringing the liquid in closer to my lantern because before I had this wet edge and then this sort of jaggedy dry area around the lantern and if I had left that the spreading pigment would eventually pull up to that boundary and leave a much harder edge. In fact, you can see what I'm talking about right over here along the wings. See, because I did not wet down the wings or the bird itself. And so, of course, the, the pigment only runs as far as there is liquid for it to go. And if you don't give it moisture, it's not going to spread into those areas. Same over here is what I'm doing. I'm allowing the pigment now to spread into those areas that I've wet down. And sometimes I'll, I'll even do it over here to soften the transitions. And then if you really don't want the liquid, the, the pigment to continue bleeding into those zones, dry it off 
just use a wet paper or a dry paper towel here. And over here, I am just lifting a little bit to soften and smooth that edge because it was a little bit too harsh an edge. Same with these, although I think it's not going to be a problem in the long run. I think that when I'm, when I'm doing the painting of the bird, these are going to be darker areas anyway, so it won't be noticeable. Same with the head. Um, it's going to be darker so or more intense pigment, so it won't really matter that I have some of this green bleeding into it at the moment. All right, so like I said, now is a drying time, and I let this sit for another half an hour or so. Sometimes I work on multiple paintings at the same time so that I can have something drying while I'm working on a new one. Right, we'll check this out in another half an hour. To make sure that my inky textures don't get obliterated when I do subsequent washes and layers, I take my Daniel Smith Transparent Watercolor Ground again and I just do a very light touch layer over the surface. And I'll, I'll sometimes actually water down my watercolor ground a little bit, just a little bit of water to it. It does not, having it diluted does not affect the effectiveness of the surface we're painting on, but it does let me brush this over quicker. And I don't want to disturb the surface very much, at all, if at all possible. So the less your brush actually moves across the surface, the better. Because if you move, you're going to start to disturb the ink and blend it. And then you lose this grainy effect that it has. So really, I just want to dab it lightly over the inky parts. And the trans translucent watercolor ground means that I will be able to paint watercolor over the top of this, even though it sort of will fix the ink in place. I used to sometimes use um, what do you call it, fixative instead to do this. I would spray a workable fixative on top of the areas where I didn't want the texture to move. I don't really like that as much. The, the workable fixative actually, even though it supposedly is workable and you're supposed to be able to do watercolors on top of it, I have not found that to be always the case. It does tend to seal in any sort of uh, porousness of your paper so that your watercolors end up just sitting on the surface of it and sliding off rather than sinking in. And I like the, the transparent watercolor ground a lot better for that purpose because it doesn't, it has a little bit of repelling properties, but not nearly as much as the so-called workable fixatives. <laughs> so yeah, this is what I do instead. And this won't take as long to dry because it's not really that thick and gloppy this time. I just did some light touching with it. And so this will probably be another 10 minutes. So again, more waiting. Like I said, the early phases of my painting end up being a lot of waiting around. I think I would like to layer some orange and gold colors into this background and into the upper areas. And you see, sometimes you have to be careful of these little bits of the ink, the dried ink bits, because if you let them sit there and you and they're loose and you brush them, they'll leave these streaks. <laughs> Not what I want right now. All right, yes, there we go. Some yellow. And orangey gold colors. Yeah, this is the streaks I'm talking about. They didn't really capture all the bits under the clear watercolor ground just now, so that's what happens. And 
sense. This is just a, a glaze of orange and yellow tones. And I want to lighten up some of these dark areas of the ink. I like some texture, but sometimes it is conflicting with my composition. And so I'm taking my white watercolor ground, diluting it a little bit, and then I can paint over some of these darker areas and lighten it up, but still maintaining a little bit of translucency so that you can see it through this layer. So all this is doing is lightening things up. It's making it not so much of this striking black over there, which I don't mind in places, but right now with a dark blotch of black here, it was really conflicting with the flow of the composition and how the bird is swooping down here. Um, and it would probably be drawing the eye at the end of the painting when it, when everything is all filled in and, and when this is all painted and colored. This dark area would really uh, be an attention grabber. So I want to lighten that up with a little bit of this white watercolor ground. And this side, I like that. I'm not going to touch that at all. I think that side is perfect as is. I'm going to work on it some more later. And again, waiting to dry. This won't take as long either, probably maybe five, 10 minutes. <laughs> 